Hey everyone, I'm Xunani. Welcome to my new video. Today I will fill a sketchbook spread with Rembrandt watercolors. I got these little tubes in an upgrade box. There were four colors, indigo, ultramarine deep, quin red and a cadmium yellow, but the yellow got lost somehow. I will link you this upgrade video. Perhaps you want to watch it. As I said, the yellow suddenly disappeared. I don't know where it could be and I was very sad because I enjoyed these paints a lot. Then a while ago, I watched Miranda Watson's video, aka Alkali Creek Art, swatching a Rembrandt dot card. Then I was hooked again and ordered again my cadmium yellow, which was lost. Unfortunately, I haven't found the small 5 milliliter tubes, so I had to buy the big ones. I think there are 10 milliliters in or perhaps a bit more, I don't know right now. I also ordered my favorites from Miranda's dot card video, which are permanent meta brownish, dusk pink, dusk green. And azomethin, azomethin, azomethin green yellow, azomethin, azomethin green yellow. I hope I pronounce this in the right way. First, I wanna swatch them and paint with them before I order a few more. Let's see if I still like them so much. The dusk pink and the dusk green should be also very special granulating ones. I still have leftovers from last time I painted with them, so I will use them here. Of course, the yellow is very nice. I really love this Quin Red. It's a bit peachier than other Quin Reds. The Ultramarine I've never used so far because I don't like Ultramarine so much. I prefer cooler blues, but it's here, so we swatch it. The indigo is such a beautiful one. Love indigo so much. Look at that. So these four are the four I had before in the upgrade box. And you don't need more than these four. You can mix any colors and this could be enough. But let's have a look at the other colors. The permanent meta brownish is a very nice one, but I remember it a bit more deep, I don't know. And this unpronounceable green-yellow, esomethin, esomethin green-yellow, is amazing. I love this color, but I always love these greenish-yellow colors, these green-golds and so on. One of my most haves from all the brands, like the Indigo. So here is where the complications began. As you can see in the next minutes, it was very hard to get the real color out of the tube for a few reasons. As I swatched the dusk green, I wondered why it is so bright and almost kind of a meridian-like color. I was disappointed, but I went on at first. And there was also a lot of air in the tube. I expected something else here with this color. Then as I swatched the dusk pink, I thought, hell yeah! This is how these dust colors have to be. But I also ask myself, was it really so, so dark? <laughs> What's wrong with them? Then I decided to fill all the paints in a little palette to see if the pigments separated so much in the tube that you have to mix them together again. The let's call them Normal colors were no problem. The dusk green was so much more liquidy as the others and a lot of air came out. Then I wanted to test the color again. No success. Same result. Disappointment. 
so I went on with my tiny palette. The dusk pink was so hard to fill, there were more air in the tube than paint, kind of. All these air bubbles and after this tiny pan was finally full, one third of the tube was empty. This I have to say was very unpleasant. I mean one tube costs about 10 euros, 10 bucks per tube, so if there is 50% air in it, I'm a bit annoyed. It's a shame. But however, perhaps this was only bad luck with these dust colors. Or perhaps you made similar experiences? Then please tell us in the comments. Then I tried again to get the right green, which I hoped for the whole time. I got a piece of cold pressed paper. My Etcher sketchbook here has hot pressed, which I'm using in this video. So I used the cold press to see perhaps the granulation better. I squeezed a lot of paint out on this paper, but got the same result. I couldn't believe this. This is not how this should look. Then I swatch the colors I choose for my today's painting. And as you can see, the dusk pink I filled in my tiny palette looked a lot pinker, a lot brighter, a lot different to my swatch in the beginning. How strange. Out of the tube, the paint was almost black before I thought if I have to mix my paint myself every time I want to paint with these colors this would be really annoying I got a lot of different color results on this day from both dusk colors. So I filled a lot of paint from the dusk green in my small ceramic palette here. I wanted to have a nice color. I mixed it and there was it. A nice dark result for the first time. This is how this green should look, I think. Yes, the pigments can separate, especially from the granulating colors, but I think it's not okay if you have to squeeze out half of the tube to get a nice color result. Perhaps it's because of the air in the tube? I don't know. I had only the green pigments in my tiny palette. I had to refill it. What was really annoying. I used my water pipette for this process until I had the right mixed color in my palette. Unfortunately, you can't get all the paint back in the tube, which is in the ceramic palette now, but I'm so tired to think about solutions. I only want to paint now and this was more stressful than I ever thought this could be if I want to test out new paints. We have four different pinks right now, by the way, on this paper. I was very annoyed. Now my color palette for today is this one. After that special experience, I sketched my motive on the spread. For inspiration, I used a photo from Pinterest. I liked her lips a lot and her nose and I made my own girl out of it 
in my style. I mainly wanted a motif for these awesome greens and pinks and all the, also the quin red, which is also very peachy. Yes, in the end, these two dusk colors are awesome. I love them, but the way to get there wasn't easy. I asked myself, if it is a difference, if I would have ordered the half pen, that dried half pen thing, you can get also half pens with all the Rembrandt colors. You don't have to order the tubes. Perhaps you have the dusk colors in half pens at home and can tell us if they work as they should. Please, please tell us. I started with a first layer wet and wet. This is how I mostly start a painting. I sprayed the whole paper with water first and then worked on top. Now it has to dry. It's the next day and my first layer is dry. The cut on paper always takes a bit longer to dry, so I give it the time it needs. Now I just want to have a good time today with these paints and my sketchbook. And this is what I had. I just flowed along this spread and I had a lot of fun painting this. Recently I'm enjoying painting portraits a lot again and also flowers. Yes, this time there are no spirits in this artwork. They are playing in the garden and having fun somewhere else today. This girl could also be a flower fairy, perhaps. Even after this different paint experience with the two granulating colors, I have to say I really like the Rembrandt paints. These are very good paints and I will restock my little Rembrandt collection in the future with a few more colors. I really would love to have a nice cool blue, also a brownish color, then I also would like to have a paints gray or a neutral tint, something like that. Perhaps another vibrant red. I don't know, we will see. I will pick four other colors to fill up my tiny palette here but not in the next weeks. The colors I have are good to work with, enough for the moment. What I'm doing here on my painting right now is painting the darks to bring out the lighter areas in the poppies, also the dark background. And then I color her hair and the light shadows in her face. I'm always very careful to not overdo it with the shadows in the faces, but I think I have to be more brave. This is what I still have to learn, blocking the darks a bit more confident. After it dried for a few hours, I'm using colored pencils. This time Polychromos from Faber-Castell, also a few from Artex and a very light one from Carandash. In the end, I really loved the result of this spread, even if this started more chaotic as I had wished for. And this spread was the first artwork since weeks, perhaps months. I really felt my art block melting away for a bit. Perhaps you remember I told you I'm art blocked right now. I'm only made art for you and the YouTube videos in the last months. I tried to paint and work in my sketchbook here and there, but it felt always a lot harder as normal. The flow I normally have was very hard to feel. Mostly it wasn't there. I don't know if I was blocked so hard another time in the last 10 years. I hope it will be better soon. Perhaps it's time for another how to overcome art block video. Also for myself to work on techniques which helped out so far with other perhaps less bad art blocks. 
But there will come a few other things in the next weeks. I have two more product tests for you, which will be interesting, I think. And I'm planning a special video for you when we reach the 3000 subscribers, what can still take a while with a Q&A and a giveaway. I'm collecting questions, so ask me anything if you like. The funny thing is, <laughs> a few of you already asked me some questions because I asked before in another video and the questions were exact the same. I mean, like 10 times the same. And this question, which is how I came up with my cute creatures and nature spirits, is perhaps worth a cool, magical nature spirit video. But I have to think about a good idea for this one. So if you don't want to miss my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button. This would be awesome. And if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. This is the best support for my channel. Thank you so much. Also a big, big thank you for my patrons. You are so awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me. Then let's have a closer look at this spread together and have an awesome week, my friends. See you next time. Yours, Xunani.